Hi! In this video I'm going to show you how you can make Totoro in Blender. This video will consist of four main parts, the modeling, the shading, the line art and the final adjustments, so that at the end you'll be able to get a similar result. So without further ado, let's start with the modeling. First add a subdivision modifier to the cube, set it to 2 and then apply it. Then in edit mode you can turn on x-ray mode, select half of the vertices and delete them. After that add a mirror modifier which will make the whole modeling process a lot easier as the mesh will be symmetric. So now you can delete the lower half of your mesh, then select these bottom vertices and press E to extrude them. This is a really helpful feature that allows you to duplicate vertices while keeping the new parts connected with the original ones. Therefore, all you have to do is repeat this process and slightly change the scale of the vertices to create Totoro's basic shape. After you finish, to fill this hole at the bottom of the mesh, you can hit F to add a face. And now with the base of the model done, you can start adjusting the shape. You can also switch to side view by pressing 3 on the number pad and 1 to go back to front view. And basically all that I'm doing here is adjusting the mesh to match Totoro's side view. Keep in mind that this is not the final model, we'll be adjusting it further later on, so you don't need to focus on making it perfect now. Moving on to create the arms, select these four faces on the side, extrude them and slightly scale them down by pressing S. Then to move them on the Z axis you can press G plus Z and also press R to rotate. Extrude the faces again and scale them down as well. After that, to make the legs, select these other four faces at the bottom of the mesh and extrude them down just like you did for the arms. It's pretty much the same process. You can also add a subdivision modifier to make the mesh look smoother. Then add two loop cuts with Ctrl R around the arms and legs. And to make the base of the legs look flat like they're standing on the ground, you can press S plus Z plus zero. To give it a better shape as well, you can go on loop tools and choose circle which, as the name suggests, it will turn the vertices into a circle. This is an add-on that comes with Blender, but it's not active by default, so you need to enable it in your preferences if you don't have it active already. And from here you can keep on adjusting the mesh. Here I realized the vertices in the back looked a bit off place, so I decided to move them to the outside a bit. Now to make the Totoro's tail, extrude these lower faces on the back on the y-axis and as simple as that our Totoro model has a tail which only needs a few minor adjustments. You can also switch to sculpt mode to modify its shape. To make the arms look a bit nicer too, you can turn the vertices into a circle like you did for the legs. And now we can move on to the ears. Select this face on Totoro's head and press I to insert. Then extrude a new face up twice. Add a loop cut here and scale it down. Then switch to X-ray mode and select the upper vertices. And from here all you have to do is adjust the position of the ears by rotating, moving and scaling them until the shape looks right. To make the eyes you're going to need more faces on your mesh so to achieve that you can apply the subdivision modifier. Then go back in edit mode and select four faces on Totoro's head, that will be the eyes. Turn them into a circle, 
and press I to insert. That's pretty much it for the eyes, now we can move on to the nose. Select these faces right below the eye, extrude them and scale them down. There is not that much to explain here, you can just follow what I do on screen. I'm just simply making small adjustments to the mesh. You can also adjust the shape in sculpt mode with the grab brush and inflate brush. And as you can see, now we have a pretty nice looking Totoro model. The next step is to create the whiskers. For this, press Shift A to search and add a curve. Then in the curve settings, under geometry, you can adjust the depth of the curve. I think 0.02 is good enough. Don't forget to enable fill caps as well. And now in edit mode, you can delete your existing curve. Then select this little pen icon here, which is the draw tool. This will allow us to draw a curve the way we want. So after you get the curve you're happy with, you can adjust it and move it forward. Then duplicate it by pressing Shift D and change its position. After that add the mirror modifier and choose the Totoro model as the mirror object. Then to make Totoro's claws add a circle, and place it in front of the right leg. Go into edit mode and extrude the vertices on the y-axis. Adjust the close position and hit F to add a face to close the circle. Then you can shade it smooth and add a subdivision modifier as well. And all that I'm going to do from here is simply adjust its shape. You can press the slash key to isolate the object and press it again to bring everything else back. Then duplicate the claw twice, then add a mirror modifier to each claw. You can press Ctrl L to link data between different objects and choose copy modifiers. Duplicate one of the claws and move it up. Rotate it and place it next to the arm. Duplicate it again until you have four claws and then adjust them in edit mode. Finally, to finish Totoro's nose, add a plane and place it between the whiskers. Add loop cut in the middle and delete the vertices on the left. Then add a mirror modifier and make sure to enable clipping. Now you can create the shape of the nose just like this. Add a subdivision modifier and also add a loop cut in the middle. But as you can see, the nose looks flat, so you will need to select all and then press E to extrude. Then adjust its position. Now as you can see, our Totoro model is almost done. The only thing that is missing is the little spikes around the ears. 
which are really easy to make. Just add a circle, scale it down and place it next to the ear. Then extrude the vertices in edit mode, just like this. And finally, duplicate it a couple of times and mirror it as well. With that done, we can move on to the second part, the shading. But before doing anything, go into the render settings and make sure to set the color management to standard so that this way we can have full control over the visuals. So now we can start working on the shading. First, select the body and add a diffuse BSDF, a shader to RGB and the color ramp. Then to get that 2D look, make sure to set the color ramp to constant and choose the colors to your liking. You can see here the hex codes for the colors that I used if you want to use the same ones. Also, make sure to move the light closer to the mesh so that you can visualize the shading better. Then replicate the same shading process for the claws. and you can press Ctrl L to link materials between them. For the whiskers, add a new material, and for this one, just add an RGB node, as the material doesn't need to be affected by light, so unlike the others, it will have only one color. After that, apply the same material to the nose. Then select the main body and add a second material by pressing this plus button in the material settings. Then name this one eye color and replicate the same shading process I showed you earlier. Set the colors to white, then in edit mode select the eye and assign the second material to it. Select the faces in the center and add a third material. We will use the same material we used for the whiskers and click assign. Then select the white faces and click eye to insert. Then do the same for the faces in the center as well and adjust the eye shape. After that, in edit mode, select the knife tool and draw the shape of Totoro's beige belly. It doesn't necessarily have to be a perfect circle as we'll adjust it later too. Select all the faces just like this. Then add another material and make this one beige. And after that, click assign. If you happen to have some unnecessary vertices, you can merge them together by pressing M. To make the mouth, select the knife tool again and draw a simple triangle shape. 
Now moving on, there is only one thing left to do to finish the shading part and that is adding an image texture. This will allow us to paint on the mesh, but to do that first we'll need to also add a mix node and plug the image texture into the factor. Then copy the color ramp from the first material and plug it into the B input of the mix node. This will be the color that we're going to paint with. So before switching to texture painting mode, make sure to add an edge seam like this in edit mode. And then unwrap the mesh by pressing U. For those of you who don't know much about unwrapping, it's basically the process of projecting each face of a 3D object onto a 2D plane. So when you press U to unwrap, what Blender does, it creates a 2D representation, a UV map of the object's surface. Also, when talking about UV unwrapping, there are these things called edge seams, which I mentioned earlier. These are used to define where a 3D object will be cut or split, helping to create separate UV islands, which are essential for texture painting as they allow you to paint details precisely, minimizing distortions. So now you can go in texture painting mode, and in order to paint on the mesh, you will need to set the brush color to white if it isn't already. You can change the radius from up here as well. And now you can start painting the little gray arrows on Tadaro's chest. Also, if you want to erase something, you can just set the brush color to black and paint over. Moving on to the third part, we can now add the line art, which is actually really, really simple. First, you'll need to adjust the position of the camera and you can press Ctrl Alt plus numpad 0 to align the camera to your current view and you can also move it with G. Then press Shift A to search, go to Grease Pencil and add a scene line art. To adjust the lines a bit, you can go in the Modifiers tab and under Edge Types, enable material borders so that there will also be lines between the different materials. You can also adjust the light thickness the way you like. And that's all for the line art, it's a really easy technique and super helpful for 2D style renders. Now we've reached the last part of this video and that is the final adjustments. Usually when exporting my Blender models, I really like to give them a nice background color. So to do that, enter the shading tab and in the left corner, switch from object to world. And what you see here is the shader for the world color. Now, usually if you change the color straight away, it will affect the shading on your mesh. So to avoid that, you can add a light path, a mix shader and another background node. And now with the second background node, we can change the world color without any issues. Then to make sure the shadows on your mesh look sharp, select the light and go into the light settings. And from here you can set the radius to zero. Finally, I decided to adjust Totoro's shape in sculpt mode a bit more. You can further adjust it as well if you like. And that's it for this tutorial, I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments and I'll see you in the next video.